I'm gonna take an explorer and clear all the amalgam from the the edges. That way, it's not stuck to your band. The base. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna clear the ama the amalgam from the band, and this is where I like using a burnisher on the edges, right? Right where the amalgam meets the tooth, so that way you get a nice seal, right? Yeah. So I'm going back and forth between tooth structure and the amalgam, so that way I have a nice seal in between the two surfaces, right? Okay. Are you moving only in one direction when you're pressing? Or? I'm moving in both, but just make sure that mostly it's on tooth structure, because you don't want to start digging your own, your own like, I guess grooves and stuff that don't need to be there. So the first thing I like doing is using carvers. So the Holland back is my favorite because it's nice and long. And I'm doing most the, as much as I can with the band still on so it gives you some time to work on the marginal ridge. So I'm gonna start here with this groove. And then using, keeping the instrument on the tooth structure, I'm going to just carve across. So, I know I'm able to rotate it in my hand, but in the mouth, you're going to have to figure out how to position your hands to get into the areas, right? So, here I'm doing the distal cusp, right? And then I'm going to do this one. And always, always, always remember, you don't want your marginal ridge to break. Carve away from the marginal ridge, okay? I just did it on the same side. Okay, and then I'm gonna come across the other side. Remember, lingual cusps have more of a contour to them, so go up and down with that tooth structure. And do you see how, because we condense so hard, that when I'm carving, things are coming out nice and smooth. There's no pits in it, there's no pores in it. And I'm always keeping the point of the instrument where I want that central groove. That way I have a nice defined central groove. And remember, keep that zigzag shape in mind. Okay? So I've done as much occlusal anatomy as I can with the band on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my thumb over the band and I'm going to loosen this last one. Right? Pull it off. Hold it where the marginal ridge is because you're doing the MO. Pull off the distal part. Okay. And this is where you have to be really gentle. Make sure there's no there's no amalgam caught between the band and the and the tooth because you don't want to pull it off and have your marginal ridge come with it. Okay. I'm going to hold it, pull out the wedge. And really, really carefully pull the band out. So now what you want to do is take care of the interproximal area. Right? So you're going to take your interproximal carver. Okay. And when you carve, you carve down, okay? Don't pull up, because if you pull up, you can pop, pop off your marginal ridge. Push down, away from the marginal ridge, right? Both sides. So if your marginal ridge breaks, don't panic. Get another capsule, condense it again, okay? No, she's not even the James Cameron. <laughs> That's Titanic, a Titanic. <laughs> if you don't do, uh, do like she's doing, you're gonna sink. Sink. <laughs> yes. Look, 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 look. look. <laughs> so now you're gonna you sink all the way down. You continue with wow. the occlusal anatomy. Right. And you want, next to the marginal ridge, there's a groove here. Right. So you kind of dig that groove and you pull it across. Keeping your instrument on tooth structure, right? Always. If not, bye bye the magic. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then for the marginal ridge, remember, there's always an embrasure, right? And the embrasure is a triangle shape. Like if you see in between each tooth, there's an embrasure, right? Mm -hmm. So triangle shape, and it happens to have you happen to have an instrument with a triangle shape. So you just gently make the embrasure. So you pull it buckle lingually, or lingual buckly, whatever is more comfortable for you. And that way you get a nice open embrasure, and it doesn't look like your restoration just goes straight to the other two. Right? And then you can use the discoid part and really define that groove if you want. So the last part is just to make sure that all of your occlusal anatomy is good. So if you have to go back and define any of the of the grooves, go ahead and do that with whatever, with whatever instrument you need to define that. And the groups of love. <laughs> I love you, <laughs> Lean. <laughs> Bye, Lean. <laughs> I'm not even on camera. I don't need to smile. <laughs> Focus. And then at the end, I like to take a piece of cotton in the hole, just take a little piece of it and get off all the extra dust that's there. I don't use like, I don't like using these because if you push too hard, it pushes into it. I just, so I just use my fingers and I rub it away. You don't use water with the cotton? Last thing you want to do to make sure the prep is good and to get everything out interproximally is you take off the rubber dam. So you pull out the little wedge of rubber dam, cut all the interceptal, especially the one that's your MO, where your MO is, right? Because if not, then you'll pop off your marginal ridge. And then you take everything off in one piece and then you look interproximally, make sure there's nothing in between. You can use a mirror, both sides. Make sure there's nothing like, um, make sure there's nothing jutting out. You can do the interproximal carver again. Remember, push away from the marginal ridge. Push down, not, not up because you can pop it off. And then you pass some floss in between very gently, right? You want to hear that snap. Go ahead and make a C on the side of the MO and also on the adjacent tooth because you never know a mountain could have gotten stuck there, right? And then don't pull up, pull out to the side, okay? And do that a couple times if you want. Go down, nice snap, right? The sides, and then pull out. And then you should have nice occlusal anatomy. Make sure like the central groove is the same as the rest of the central groove that'll tell you if you need to carve more or you've over carved and then make sure the cusp the amalgam has the same contour as the remaining cusp and that's it good luck